Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Fred Ranger and I hope you are doing good. I did a little poll on my YouTube community tab asking you what you would like to see next and a lot of you have asked me to do kind of a full two year review of the Leica Q2. That's a camera that's been very, very popular over the past two, three years and uh, since it came out actually. And a lot of people are asking me if this is still a valid option in 2023. There are some rumors about a Leica Q3 coming up shortly, but we never know. And my philosophy around it is that if this actually fits your bill right now, you shouldn't actually wait for a next camera because there will always be a next camera. And if you want to start shooting, you need to have a camera in your hand. Although it is a very pricey camera for a point and shoot or, you know, point and shoot style camera with a fixed lens, it has some tremendous advantages and I'll go through them in this video. And I always uh, like to compare it with other options that I have in my arsenal and also uh, talk about some of the stuff that I would like to see in an next iteration of this camera. So first off, why did I buy this camera in the first place? I mean, this is an other fixed camera lens. I had a Fujifilm X100, but I wanted to test out that sensor that everybody was talking about full frame in a small-ish form factor that I could bring on my daily carry. And oh boy, was I not um, you know, dissatisfied with it. I actually fell in love right away, right from the first couple pictures that I took. And I'm gonna put some examples on the screen. There is something unique about this sensor. And that's my first point why you might wanna consider a Leica Q2. After two years, I've taken some of my favorite images. Some of them actually have been published and uh, some of them actually were highlighted in the, in the Leica Photography International community. And I'll put some examples on the screen. I actually won a contest also with uh, some images that I've taken with this one. And it's not because necessarily the quality of the image, although it is a 47 megapixel file that you can crop in, that you can edit very easily with the DNG, but it is the fact that it's inspiring to have it on you at all time and it enables you to take more pictures. So statistically, if you have, you know, uh, more pictures and you have a good eye, then you'll end up with more keepers at the end of the day. So sensor is one of them. I had a plethora of Fujifilm cameras that were APS-C sensor. And although I love APS-C because of the size and so on and so forth, there are some advantages of having a full frame sensor, um, especially the Leica one within this form factor. The second thing that I will say is that you're really buying into this lens, this um, Sumilux 28 millimeter f 1.7. That's what you're actually buying when you buy this camera. A lot of people say that you're buying a lens that actually comes with the body for free, but uh, at the price tag that this camera is, nothing is free on this camera. Uh, but the lens is very, very unique and special. Again, if you want to compare it to the X100V, beautiful 23 millimeter, that's equivalent to 35 f2 lens, but it is not as you know, great as this one in terms of the bokeh you can create with the lens, in terms of the micro contrast, how it resolves. Actually, all those, all those 47 megapixel on this camera. So that lens offers you a high, high, high quality glass, but also 1.7, which brings you to a very shallow depth of field. You can do your very interesting bokeh in the background with a 28 millimeter, which is not usually the case when you have a wide angle being able to blur the background but this will do it if you're close enough and also one feature that i really really like it's that macro setting that you can do here so you can in the flip of a switch or the turn of the ring now you are in macro mode and i'll put some examples of how i've been using it so far so not having to put any filters or changing a lens to get to a macro mode it does bring you to f 2.8 when you are in macro mode but this is more than enough to do all those shallow depth of field type of macro shot and i really really enjoy it so the lens itself is the second uh, point why you might want to consider this like a q2 and i've been loving loving this lens to a point where i'm like wow okay so now it, 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 it makes me want to explore the uh, sumilux's uh, options on the M bodies. I have an M6 right there. So I might actually at some point uh, add that to my collection. Right now I'm using a Voigtlander, which is great. But again, Sumilux, there's something unique about it. 
Uh, then also the uh, form factor. So this is a camera that's really inspiring to pick up. You get a small-ish form factor. It's a rangefinder style camera, uh, but I mean, if you just look at it right here, you can see that this is a very beautiful camera. I'll also put some B-roll. Um, also very easy to change the battery. I like the system where you just do this and then the battery doesn't fall off. You actually have to click and then you can remove the battery and then to change it or to replace it, as easy as that. And for the SD card, voila, this is very easy. You can access it. It's not stuck with the battery um, as most of the other options when it comes to point and shoots. They have both their respective places. Um, the other uh, thing that I really, really like about this camera is the viewfinder. So uh, I, although I love my M cameras, uh, the M6, and I was shooting the M10 most recently, uh, and the focusing patch, it does actually slow you down very, very much. And sometimes you just wanna be quick. And this, since this is a daily carry, this is something that I'm bringing everywhere that I go. I would just wanna turn it on, point, do the focus, and then boom. Did I say boom? <laughs> bam, let's say bam. <laughs> it sounds better. Uh, then you're, you're ready to go. So the autofocus on this camera, although it's not the greatest autofocus, it still is in contrast to tech. It's not that face to tech that um, some of the newer cameras are, are starting to implement, but it's more than enough. Again, this is a 28 millimeter. So when you're doing street photography at like F5.6 to F11, uh, you won't you know be really messing uh, with the focus. But when you wanna do some close focusing stuff, uh, this is you know more than enough to do all the focusing you want to do. So the viewfinder, like I said, is very bright, is very um, big, and you can definitely see uh, the frame lines when you activate the crop mode. And this is another thing that I really like about this camera. If you look here, and you can actually see me there, hello. Uh, if you look here, when I press on, these, on this button, it gets me a, so this is the 28 millimeter, this is the 35, this is the 50, and this is the 75, I think. Yeah, this is a 75 frame line. So all it does is that it crops in digitally and it gives you the full 28 millimeter field of view, but it also put the frame lines for different focal length. Of course, this is not like having a 35 millimeter or a 50 or a 75 millimeter with a depth of field and a micro contrast and all this great stuff, but it is very versatile. When you travel and you don't wanna be switching up lenses and you just want that, that little crop to get a little bit closer to the image or to do a different type of framing, this camera offers you that ability. And with 47 megapixel, you can only imagine that this is very easy to do and it does bring down the megapixel count. But again, you've got 47 megapixel. I think the last one is six megapixel, which is more than enough sometimes for if you want to upload to the web and the other uh, crop modes are you know more than enough pixels when you want to edit your images the other thing that i really like about this camera is the files so the dng files that are coming up coming out of this camera the uh, raw files basically uh, in lightroom this has been a game changer so most of the time with the settings that i've put in i just upload it to lightroom then i look at the file and i'm like wow okay i've probably going to spend more, not more than one minute or two minutes on an edit. I've got my preset that I use, but uh, the, the files don't really need actually a lot of editing. Why? Because they're so rich. The colors are so, so, so deep that to, in order to bring it to where I want it to be, um, I don't have to do a lot of editing. So this has been a game changer. Again, Fuji, love the, the files that are coming out of there. The colors are great. The film simulation, of course, I've done tremendous videos, tremendous amount of videos on that. But uh, I also like to shoot raw because I sometimes shoot some very unique scenes with high dynamic range or a lot of contrast. And I also have my editing style. I can now say that after you know shooting for like 18 years, uh, I've developed my kind of own little recipe that I like to apply and those DNG files are just tremendously easy and great to work with. So those are the main reasons why I like this camera. And also I would say the last point about this camera, it's the simplicity. So this is a very simple camera from the way it operates with very few buttons. You've got your shutter speed right here. Here, if you click on it, you're gonna get to, oh, sorry, here, if you click on this button, uh, you're gonna get to ISO. So right now I can change my ISO just by the click of that button. And this is my exposure compensation. This is how I signed it. And yeah, that's pretty much all the buttons that there is to this camera. Of course, in the back, there's three buttons that are pretty self-explanatory. 
the playback, the function that you can assign to whatever you want, and menu. And the menus are actually very, very easy to go through. This has to be the um, pretty much the simplest menus that I've had to work with, and I've tried a lot of cameras out there. The Fuji is probably the close second, maybe because I've shot it for so long, but you know, compared to the Sony or to Lumix uh, and to Canon and so on and so forth, again, it depends on if you're really used to a menu, then the menu is easy for you, but I found that this uh, didn't take me long to just fire it up and understand where everything was. Um, also, for this camera, the one thing that I will say is that I always want to pick it up uh, for another reason is that the accessories that are made for this camera are so high quality. So right now this is my thumb rest. This is the one from Leica. And yes, it is a bit on the expensive side. And this is one thing that you're going to see if you decide to invest in Leicas. But it, it it's like perfection when it comes to the, uh, the cut of those accessories. This is the thumb rest. It actually still enables you to hit that little crop button here because it's perfectly laid out on top and then it makes it a joy to to hold like that and i've added a couple of accessories like this rubber cap because you don't want to lose the metal one and it's heavy the metal one that one does the job and there's even also a little attachment here so you actually ended up not losing it uh, anywhere when you travel so i found this to be very useful so those are the things that are making me still shoot this camera to this date. I've had it for the past two years and I love, love, love this camera. A couple things that I wish this camera had. Oh, by the way, this camera is also weather sealed. This is not a deal breaker for me, but it's just confidently, you know, it, it brings a level of confidence that uh, you don't have with other options like my XE4 and other options that are on the smaller side. So again, go back to things that I would like to see improve on this camera. So I mentioned it, the autofocus. I wish this camera had a um, face detect autofocus because it's more accurate, it's uh, snappier, and it gives you an extra level of confidence when you're trying to uh, focus on some contrasty scenes and so on. So that's one thing that I think they can implement. I don't know if that lens can do it, but software wise, they started to implement it in Lumix cameras, which is the same as the SL2, which is very similar SL2 to this, uh, how this camera function so hopefully fingers crossed they're going to be able to put it in or maybe they'll wait for the uh, like a q3 because like a still a business and they still need to make money at some point so the the uh, autofocus is one of them the second part is i've gotten used to the flip up screen on my other cameras like my xe4 on fujifilm or the all the xt series and pretty much all the latest cameras that you can find on the market have some sort of swipe uh, not swipe but uh, uh, lift up or on the side type of screen i wouldn't see a, a, a slide flippy screen on that one but maybe on the q3 they're going to find a very clever way like they done in the x100v to be able to make it flush like this so it doesn't actually show when it's closed, but you can move up if you want. Very, very useful for low angle shot and when you wanna do some, um, again, tilt up type of uh, photography. So I wish that it had that, it doesn't have it. So when you don't have it, it's an extra limitation. And you know what, limitations are good. It forces you to be more creative in the way you shoot and it has not been a problem, but of course there are situations where I would have used it when it's very, very low angle shots. Another thing that I wish this uh, camera had was a system where uh, you can actually import all of the settings from another camera. I shoot a other Leica cameras, so I haven't found a way uh, to bring all my cameras to the same exact you know, operating mode. So that's something that if you know how to do it from an SL to a, a Q and from a Q to an M, maybe it's not possible because of they have different functions, but uh, that's something that I wish it had. I like when my cameras are set up exactly the same way, so I don't have to think about, okay, I'm on this system, I need to, okay, this button does that, and my function button operates like that. I like to, across the board, try to align it as much as I can, and I haven't found a way to do it on this camera. Uh, the Leica Q3, I don't know when it's gonna come out, but I'm sure it's gonna have the 60-ish megapixel sensor that the new cameras have. So the Leica M11 is uh, sporting that new sensor. And I wish that this camera had better highlight recovery like this new sensor. It's not about the megapixel, to be honest, 47 is more than enough to print big, 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 and to do some nice large um, uh, zines and so on and so forth. But 
For me, I think the highlight recovery is one of the uh, thing that this sensor is not the best at and better low light performance. I think that the new sensor, regardless of the higher megapixel count, is offering you better highlight recovery and better low light performance. And I think that this is a camera that will benefit from being able to shoot in lower light. I will push this to 6400 and that's pretty much the max I will do with this Leica Q2. But um, again, would be nice to have confidence that it can go up to maybe like the Leica uh, uh, Q2 monochrome, which I know it doesn't have the color filter, so it can go up to like 50,000 ISO without any perceivable noise. I mean, yes, there will be grain or there'll be a bit of noise, but the way the uh, pixels work on a color camera, it's harder to do it. So again, I wish that the, the next one will have a better high ISO performance and the highlight recovery. Um, I mean, Leicas are known for making sure that uh, you have to make sure that your highlights are not blown out because they're harder to bring back, let's say compared to a Sony or other options out there. But overall, I mean, this is the camera that I've shot the most over the past two years uh, for those reasons. I still pick it up every day. I have a lot of other options out there, but there's something that brings me back to the form factor, the quality of the image, the viewfinder, that lens that offers me Sumilux 1.7 in the f-stop and also macro mode so a lot that is going on for this camera but i want to know are you interested in a leica q2 like me are you have you been shooting like a q2 over the past couple of years are you considering picking one up if you have any questions about it please ask uh, them down below if you like this video please give it a thumbs up also subscribe to this podcast this podcast to this youtube channel i do have a podcast and please subscribe to that too but this is the youtube channel and i invite you to uh, to subscribe because if you want to see uh, me shooting this camera there are videos about it and i'm planning on doing more i'm actually going to barcelona in a couple days uh, where i'll bring the q2 of course because this is the ideal travel camera setup and i'll film maybe a little pov down there so you can see even more uh, photos coming out of this camera and also if you want to see photos taken with this camera and all the photos that i've shown today hit that uh, instagram uh, link uh, down below and also on vero so i've been fred ranger please be happy enjoy life and enjoy your like a q2 cheers <laughs>